Well, I shared with you this morning the story of Jane, Jean Nittich, a 214-pound homemaker desperate to lose weight. She went to, New, to the New York City Department of Health, where she was given a diet that was devised by Dr. Norman Jolliffe. Two months later, feeling discouraged and with 50 pounds still to go, she invited six overweight friends to her house to share this diet and to talk about how to stay with it. Today, 4.6 million members attend Weight Watchers meetings every week. And when asked how she was able to take control of her life, Jean Nittick shares this, her own story. When she was a teenager, she used to cross a park where she would see the young mothers sitting together chatting while their, to their toddlers were sat on the swings with no one to push them. She said, I'd give them a push. And you know what happens? Pretty soon the kid is pumping and doing it himself. That's my role in life. I'm here to give others a push. In other words, she saw herself as an encourager, one who makes someone more determined, hopeful, or confident, and as Miriam Webster continues to say, to inspire with courage, spirit, or hope. Now, on the road to ordination, candidates are asked at some point, after Jesus, who is your most favorite person in the Bible and why? And my response is Barnabas, because he was an encourager. And not much is known about Barnabas. We are introduced to him in the fourth chapter of Acts, verses 36 and 7. Originally called Joseph, he was nicknamed Barnabas, Barnabas which means son of encouragement. And it may be, have been a way to identify him uh, from the others who were also named Joseph. We know that he was from the tribe of Levi, and he came from the Isle of Cyprus. We are also told he sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. He was generous and shared what he had with others. And we know that after Pentecost and the Holy Spirit's tongues of fire, the believers all pooled their money and food and belongings to be distributed among the poor and those in need. It was Barnabas who brought a man named Saul to the others. The same Saul who persecuted Christians and was feared by many. The same Saul who met Jesus on the road to Damascus and was a newly converted believer. The same Saul who later becomes Paul. It was Barnabas who encouraged the others to accept Saul and testified to them that Saul had preached boldly in the name of Jesus. Barnabas joins Paul on missionary trips as they preach the good news of Jesus Christ, and many heard and believed. When reading some of these early texts of Scripture, we, notice, we always want to note the order of the names listed, and it also speaks to the order of their importance. And several times, Barnabas is listed before Paul. So we know that his preaching was strong and convincing. If only. If only Barnabas had kept a, uh, had kept a written narrative of his experiences and his travels with Paul. But alas, he didn't. So we have no record that he did. A man named Frank Gayline, one of the writers of the Expositor's Bible Commentary notes, Barnabas is an important figure in Luke's account of the church's expansion from Jerusalem to Rome. He appears at times as kind of a hinge between the mission to the Jewish world and to that of the Gentiles. We meet Barnabas here in Antioch as people from all over the region came to hear him preach. And when he gets there, he is filled with joy by the evidence of God's blessing. And Barnabas encouraged these believers to stay true to the Lord. And that's what draws me to Barnabas. 
He encouraged them to stay true to the Lord. As we begin our third year with a pandemic, where do you hear and to whom do you offer words of encouragement? In one sense, it's been a confusing time. There is no clear-cut guideline for every person in every state to follow. Wear a mask or no? Keep businesses and churches open or no? Are we out of the danger zone with this virus or will it always be with us? None of us have been through a pandemic before, so we don't have a past experience to draw from. And because the season has been going on so long, what has happened to our mental health? How have these last three years affected our faith in God, our joy, our love for one another? How have we encouraged each other to stay true to the Lord? Or how can we, as Paul wrote to the believers in Thessalonica, encourage each other and build each other up? I don't think he meant that in a sort of a false sense of being overly cheerful or only looking on the bright side or keep your sunny side up kind of, a, kind of a way, but in a way that brings honor to God and strengthens our faith. How do we fulfill the words of Jesus to take care of widows and orphans, feed the hungry, visit the sick and those in prison, seek justice for those still needing freedom from oppression, and sharing the gospel, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. How do we encourage each other in John Wesley's words to do no harm, do good, and stay in love with God? Remember a few years ago? Do a random act of kindness. And yes, it's still going on today. And maybe we could start a random acts of encouragement movement. Think of the possibilities there could be to randomly, or even intentionally, encourage one another. In verse 24 of this passage of scripture, we're told, Barnabas was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and strong in faith. Words that any of us would want said about us. Barnabas encouraged the believers to stay true to God. And I, too, encourage you to stay true to God and to seek opportunities to encourage those around you. I share the story of the Duke of Wellington, the British military leader who defeated Napoleon at Waterloo. He was not an easy man to serve under. He was brilliant, demanding, and not one to shower compliments. And yet even Wellington realized his methods left something to be desired. And in his old age, a young lady asked him, what, if anything, would you do differently if you could live your life over again? And Wellington thought for a moment and then replied, I give more praise. And lastly, Whenever our bishop sends emails or letters, he ends with the words, be encouraged. Love God, follow Jesus, and be encouraged. 